Hello, everybody. <clears throat> oh, I have a frog in my throat. Good morning. Uh, I've been getting all sorts of questions about how I do my morning warm ups. And so here I am showing you my little workstation here. I have a couple of tables set up in an L position and sort of in the corner of that is my workspace. But these tables are full of some of my favorite drawing tools, um, random paints, brushes, and other sorts of things. There really isn't any logic in how I've accumulated this mess other than I reach for a tool and then I don't necessarily put it away when I'm done with it. Um, but that said, at the end of each day, what I try to do is leave myself a little stack of interesting papers to look at in the morning and see what feels like it um, would work for a drawing. The big thing with to remember with these warm-ups is that they're not precious. They are warm-ups. They're like little stretches um, for your art muscles. They're not meant to be anything finished. They're mostly meant to just teach you and to give me the opportunity to settle into thinking creatively about problem solving without any pressure. So um, because I've been working on recycled materials, I have a variety of envelopes here and um, I'm just gonna take a look at them and, and see what see what they have to offer and just see what feels interesting to me today. And what I really like is this light blue sort of security striping that is sitting here. This looks fabulous. Um, and I also really like this blue checkerboard. And I'm digging this cardboard envelope too. So I think that's those are what I'm gonna work on today. So I'm gonna set these other, these other bits aside for now. Um, and I also have, um, off to the side here, I have a number of other little um, drawings from previous days. And these are candidates for additional marks or changes or maybe inspiring something new um, as I work. So I'm not necessarily just starting and stopping or, or starting and finishing a singular piece. Um, as I am just making marks in general. Now, as I rotate this on my work surface, I'm thinking about not just the design that I wanna put on it, but is there an orientation that feels more interesting or more comfortable? And for me, this, this, seems, to, um, this seems to be what what I'm gonna go with. And I can't explain why, it just resonates, it feels right. I've grabbed one of my favorite little pieces of um, graphite and I'm just gonna start drawing. Now, I get asked all the time, where do my subject matter or ideas come from? And for these, I'm just drawing from my head and I am thinking specifically about winks or things that have appeared repeatedly in my life um, in the last few days. And today I happen to be thinking about bears. Uh, I had a bear visit me in my dreams last night and I'm thinking that, I'm thinking I might start out with a bear and then add a fox and a rabbit, which are two other, two other, um, spirit animals that seem to show up quite a bit. But the other thing that I want to point out is that when I when I start these, I'm not really committed to the idea of a bear plus a fox plus a rabbit. I allow them to evolve and shift organically as I see things or feel things or different ideas come to me. So I'm going to start with a bear here. And I'm just drawing from I'm drawing from my head, from my memory. I really truly believe that drawing from your memory is the best way to sort of get the full impact of what an animal shape could mean to you. You know, I could, 
I could spend time finding a reference photo. Oh, I love the spare shape here. I could spend time finding a reference photo and um, drawing to match that photo, but then there's no sense of who I am as an individual. This drawing that's done from life carries a lot more of that um, sort of individualization. Like for me, I really cherish this sort of expression. that one can get. When they just work from their gut. and it'll lift some of the charcoal off. Not all of it, but some of it. Let's add some bare toes. I go back over into these areas or these lines that I've already made. I'm not necessarily just tracing over them. I'm creating similar line work. But it's not a matter of tracing and repeating what's already been there. It's embellishing or adding to it. There's a little bit of blue hint to this paper. I'm looking for my blue pencil. Here we go. This is a blue pencil. So let's add I thought I did it. I thought I was going to add other animals to this, but they didn't show up. I rather like the shape that's here, so I am going to leave it as it is. I'm just putting a little bit of acrylic medium over top of this because my lines are made with really soft tools. I want to. Um, sort of seal those marks and keep them from spreading. So I'll put that medium over top of it and hit it with a brayer. And then I'll let this dry and I'll come back to it with, um, with some more marks down the road. But I'll just, meanwhile, I'll just set it aside and I'll start another one. So let's start this one with a rabbit.
This rabbit's going to be given a side eye. Let's have a fox be right here. something up here to sort of set it off. Let's see. Let's do, let's do another bear. So well. What it is about toes, but I really love, I really love toes. that blue line where it came out. Let's get just a little bit more. I think I want the negative space to be lighter than the object, so I'm just going to a zinc white acrylic paint here and I like zinc white for these drawings because it's pretty transparent it's not an opaque white at all so it it, it will show through when it dries it will hint at or allow some of this security imprint on the envelope to come through. The 
but the one drawback about using it is that sometimes you have to do multiple layers in order to get the sort of coverage that you want. Like I can already tell that feels really flat over there. But that's okay. These paintings, these little warm-ups aren't so much a rush or anything meant to be done in a rush. I really like this rabbit face. I like how the eye, the one eye ended up beyond her body. I think that's kind of fun. So if I'm gonna pull her in a little bit, let's, let's do something here with this bear. have a plan other than I'm really enjoying the feel of this pencil on the paper right now and the difference in how it feels when it moves across the dry middle area and the area with the paint and the medium there's some nice differences that happen there in, in the tactile quality of the line making So I just sort of continue on in this way and I go back and forth and, you know, picking up different tools. I'm not seeing any sorts of marks coming off of this white pe paper or pencil. So I'm going to let go of that. But what about this one? art crayon. These are relatively new. I just got these. So I haven't used them a whole lot. Where'd my lid go? There it is. I have them in a couple of different colors though. Let's put a little bit of this peachy color right down here. The thing that's nice about these is that they're like a gel and they They'll blend a little bit. Let's make the tip of his ear a little bit wider. I feel like I want this curved a little bit more, so let's do that. on again. Now, at some point, the paper will get so wet that I'm going to tear it. So I do have to be aware of that too. This isn't art paper, so it's not going to take the same sort of abuse. That uh, a surface made specifically for drawing on light. So there you have it, a quick little demo. I'm gonna bring this other piece back. Well, this is dry now. Quick little demo of how I work my 
how I work with my warm-ups. I think if you, if this is a practice that you want to establish for yourself, your best bet is to set up an area or put your supplies into a box so that they are easily accessible. You can pull them out whenever you want them. And maybe even if you have the space to be able to set them up the night ahead so that when you come down or you begin your day, they're right there, they're immediately accessible and you can get straight to work. Keep your, your drawing goals small at first. The smaller your project, the more apt you are to complete it. Right? So um, if I were to set out to do a big old giant, you know, 18 by 24 drawing every day, I probably wouldn't be able to complete it on some days just because life happens. Um, but these small little envelopes, these are like five or six inches high. They're really easy. You can see they just take a little bit of time to um, get started. So these ones are pretty easy to work on. And really ultimately when you are trying to establish a new habit, you wanna set things up so that you're successful. So keep that in mind when you're building the parameters of what it is you wanna accomplish. And then just set a timer and give yourself, you know, 15, 20 minutes. You don't need a whole lot of time, you can see how very little time these took. Um, so give yourself just a little bit of time that keeps you from overworking things and um, keeps your line work really fresh. And let me know how your uh, daily warm up challenge works out. Um, ultimately, I think it's a great tool to help you to see line as well as your tools in a different way. And it's sort of like um, playing. It's just like going out on the playground or having a recess at the beginning of your work day. I think it's a great practice and I wish you all the best with it. Keep on coming back here to see my own daily warm ups. And actually, if you want to see more videos and instruction along this line related to my paintings and the other things that inspire me, please uh, check out my online classroom space at Patreon. It's www.patreon, P is in Perry, A is in Apple, T is in Tree, R, E, O, N is in Nancy, dot com, backslash Kimberly Kelly Santini. That link's also on my website, which is KimberlySantini.com. Thanks so much, and I look forward to sharing more warm-ups with you. Have a great day. Bye.